Hey friends, it's Brian here and it's time for Jeep video number 70. So if you're new to the project, this is my Jeep build from a salvage uh, totaled out Jeep. Uh, we're on the downhill side, the easier part. We've already done bad things to the frame and made it behave again. Uh, be sure to check out my playlist Jeep build and um, be sure to uh, hit that like button if you find this entertaining and useful. Um, hit subscribe if you wanna see more of my videos and hit the bell icon if you wanna know when those videos come out. Thanks for watching. So here's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna put the spark plug uh, coil contraption in um, and then I was looking at this and this is looking pretty shitty. So I'm gonna take this out, wash it off, let it dry, paint it, and basically, basically try to extend the life of that part. So that's that's what tonight's project is for this video. So let's do it to it. So I'm gonna start with this because there's a really good chance that it'll be dry by the time I get anything else done. Um, it's been a really crazy day. Yesterday and today have both been crazy. I hadn't gotten a whole hell of a lot done. Um, so anyway, that looks like it could be a 13 millimeter so we're going to start there i think well, half inch is close enough that'll at least tell us if we're in the neighborhood or not yeah that's a 13 millimeter so um All right, so I'm gonna use my ratchet because it's just it's faster. when working on a vehicle like this is to label the bolts as you take them out. And I did this over a year ago when I started this project and it's really been very helpful. And it uh, increases the odds of ever finding them again. knowing what they went to when you do find them. Probably just destroyed that, but we'll see. There we go. So let's, uh, I'm gonna go wash this off because it's pretty nasty. It looks like it's had some battery acid on it and that's what I was concerned about. Real common. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash it, um, hit it with like a little scrubby brush and then I'm gonna paint it with a Rust-Oleum rust reformer and then I'm gonna come back with flat back paint. Let's see if this comes out. Oh, it does. All right, so let's let's spare this the indignity of being painted. Uh, come on, what the fuck? How did this get in here? Okay, so apparently this piece comes off. That looks like a good candidate.
I sure wish I could figure out how to get this off because it's it's about to get torn off. But that's probably not the right way to do it. So what do we got here? I still don't even I don't even see what the fuck is holding it in. That that's the part that's irritating to me. I see the, how it's going to get ripped off here, though. That's going in the trash. We're never going to see that again. So, uh, that should clear this. Yep, there we go. So, uh, we'll just set that there. All right, I'll be right back. Let me go wash this battery tray. Okay, so this is a vacuum reservoir and uh, it looks like it's broken. So that would explain why it is bouncing around like a banshee. It's supposed to have a screw here and here. And what it does instead is just has an opportunity to bounce around. So it's supposed to be anchored just like this. do is as you go down the road it's gonna do that constantly and that's gonna be irritating as hell so I'm also thinking about yeah there's some corrosion and stuff down here oh, it looks like it's just dirt So there's the piece that anchors it at the bottom. Let's see what the back side of this looks like. Hmm. You know what? I think I have a solution for this. tell you precisely what I was going to do before I did it, but then you all would have time to laugh at me, and I want it to be a little bit of uh, suspense, but I have a perfect solution for this problem. First, I have to get a industrial strength cleaner to make sure that I get my work area clean because clearly and if you've seen this garage you know how important that isn't um, so we're gonna pull this out of here and supposed to come off that easily. Uh, I took a lot of paint off with acetone and acetone should not take off cured paint. So I have some RTV left over and this is a thoroughly inappropriate thing to do with it. But I think it'll work just fine. And it's honestly it's going to go bad anyway. So I'm going to RTV it in place. So this goes down in here like that. 
and then that goes there and then let me find something to wedge that yeah these work heavy enough. thing on our agenda is to put the spark plug coil widget midget whatever the hell it is back in so this is it here Life will be a lot easier if this is plugged in. So it plugs into here. since I've been in here, but this was an absolute pain in the ass last time, and this time isn't gonna be that much different. It's just really a tight squeeze back here. They didn't leave a lot of space. find those bolts and I'll be back in a minute okay so these bolts uh, and again I've, I've got them in a bag that says ignition coil so uh, it's easy for me to find them over a year later it's been 15 months since I took this engine apart the instructions say to uh, thread these in and uh, snug them. And then tighten them down. That's 250 inch pounds, which is really low. And they call this thing a coil rail. This is one of the things that was damaged when I bought this Jeep and it wouldn't start because this was broken. So I spent a little bit of money on this. I put a Delphi uh, coil rail in. Um, Delphi is a major reputable manufacturer. So let's see. They are 13 millimeters. That's good. is 250 inch pounds is all the way up 
um, on this uh, torque wrench. So we're going to start with um, we're going to start with 80 inch pounds, and we're going to bring them all to 80 inch pounds. It says to torque tighten them in stages. Uh, I think I'm going to need some extensions on this. I normally prefer not to use extensions on torque wrenches, but I need the clearance and I want them all to be done the same. Well, that one's sounding like it's not right. Okay, so now I gotta figure out what's going on with this front bolt. All right, so we're at 80 inch pounds for all the bolts. So now I'm gonna take it up to 120, 125. All right, we're so we we'll go for 80 to 125. That's a 30 percent increase. So now we're going to step up to, oh this only goes to 200 inch pounds so we'll have to convert that. So we're going to go ahead and step up to 230, or 200 and then we'll figure out what 250 inch pounds is. Uh, easy way to do the math. Double check these. Hey Siri, what's 250 divided by 12? 250 divided by 12 is approximately 20.8333. So, let's see if we've got, if we can go down to 20. So we can, so we'll go to 21 on our 3 8 wrench, um, because the, uh, it's 250 inch pounds is too much for the other torque wrench. So let me uh, switch over.
All right. My uh, battery tray has come out, and again, I've got some exposed metal, some rust, some corrosion here. Not a big deal. I'm going to hit it with rust reformer, and um, you know this is this is working out good. So we're going to start on the bottom of it first because I'm less concerned about that. So the other thing you can use to deal with rust is you can wire brush anything that's loose, which isn't really a bad idea. Um, let me see what I've got for wire brushes. I actually have one chucked up. So let's go ahead and do that first. Uh, this will only take a second. And those are famous last words. All right. Okay, so I really should let this dry for a few minutes. It shouldn't take very long, but I'm not very patient. And it's going to get painted again anyway. Alright, that's the side I'm actually concerned about, so now I'm going to sit and let this dry, and then I'm going to come back with some uh, of the uh, official Jeep color, flat enamel. I thought I had another canvas open somewhere. I don't see it. Hmm, whatever. So anyway, uh, I think that's all the little stuff that I'm doing on this video. So we will go ahead and call it. Um, the next step on this will be to put it back in after it's been painted and allowed to dry. So it's going to get a few uh, paint coatings. Uh, I'm going to stop this video because the next thing that I'm going to do is the transfer case shifter and that should be its own project so that people who are interested in it can find it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video.